Hey everyone and welcome back. So what I want to do is I want to show you how we've created our login screen prototype. Now you can see just an overview on how complex that can be just from going from one page to the next. You also notice over here I have different variations of a certain page just to showcase how interaction will happen and what that may look like. So we may need to even break this down further if we want to get really into the nitty gritty details, but let me show you what it looks like. So what I want to do is we've gone to the home screen from the last prototype. We have our login CTA over here. And what I want to do is I want to go straight to our login. So this is the login section I've created. Now, if you go to a profile without being logged in, we have a login screen. If they click this, what I want to happen is this button shrinks a bit. So I want to showcase that interaction and maybe it lightens a bit. If they want to go back home, so I've connected that backwards. And what will happen here, this is the active state and we're actually not going to be doing much here. After they click this button, I have a delay. So 50 milliseconds afterwards, we're just going to pop to the next screen. We're going to dissolve. And that's going to pop into this screen. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Let's just click play. Okay. So what we have here is our screen. We're going to click login. Perfect. So now I can see what I can click. If I wanted to go back, I, that screen just kind of pushes itself back in and go there. Okay. So if I click login, you're going to need to catch this little interaction. So you saw how that button just kind of like, plopped itself back uh, down and up, but there was definitely some clear feedback in the type of animation we had there, the little micro interaction. So it was just very subtle. And that's how you would create like prototypes just for that. Now what happens here is actually, if I just click down it, the button, like I said, it shrinks, it goes back up. Now, in the instance, we're trying to show like some connection of screens alongside those micro interactions. And that's what makes this so complex. So after this kind of shrinks down, it goes back and shrinks back up. So as you can tell, we're creating like a lot of duplicates here. And then after a 300 millisecond delay, overlay will pop up. So it's going to move in from the bottom. No smart animating match layers. We just want a brand new screen. So that's where we are right now. So we've showcased that button interaction. If we want to close this, so we are using some components here. If we want to close this, it's just going to shrink back down. So we have that right back down. So this is a large overlay that we've created. Now the next a fun thing we're going to talk about here is the different types of input states. So I've set up this login page and sign in page. So if they want to sign up, it would go to a new sign up page, but I have like social logins. I have our main logins. And what will happen here is if I click this, it's going to move in the Apple keyboard that I have here. I've created a component and it's actually in our design system. So what's going to happen is it's going to pop this up. It's going to smart animate. So nothing else is going to move. So you'll notice that this will change. And this is what I'm talking about when we have to rename our components, which makes it a little bit confusing, but it's okay. So I've just renamed it to input and this one's renamed to input as well. So they're both named email and then input that all matters if you want it to match properly. So this is going to pop up like a little uh, carrot indicating that you can type, you are active on the input. We have a little bit of shadow here showcasing that it is active. We have the outline. We want to make that really clear. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm going to click login. Not bad, right? Now, if we want to even go the extra mile, we can create like a little GIF of that component carrot over here. That's just kind of on the side and have it blink over and over again to even get the further detail of what this interaction looks like. But if we go back, I'm just going to click the back arrow. So this should still be fixed in this instance. If we click out, then this will drop back in. But this is what we have. Let's show that again. Boom. Really nice. So the next step is to just showcase. I've actually selected 
all the different keys here. I mean, you don't need to do that. You can just, if you want to just showcase the interaction entirely, I went a little above and beyond and did that. But when the user clicks the key, I want them to navigate to this section. So we have the same, same page duplicated once again. The only thing that changes on this page is now it's filled. The password is filled. We're still active on here. And the get started button changes from disabled to primary. So we have the disabled, we have, I think I've, uh, yeah, it's primary now. And we have the enabled go button over here for our iOS users. So I've set just a smart animate, anything that is named the same will kind of like either behave accordingly, other content that isn't will just kind of apply a dissolve effect and you'll probably see that with the get started button. So let's take a look. Yeah, so the dissolve effect applied on there. And from here, I can click get started. So as you can tell, we have a couple different options here. Let's take a look. So we can close this all over again. We can click the go button or click the get started. If we click the get started button, we go through that same process of, you know, losing the focus of this. This will kind of shrink and then we will pop back up into here. And there you go. And we're back to our home screen and now we're logged in. I mean, if they don't have an actual login, they'll probably have to go through a sign up registration. But if they do, then their profile will be found and we'll go back to relevant details for them. And that is how you create a little bit more of a complex prototype with different types of mini interactions like this, where we're kind of focusing on state changes within inputs. Those are incredibly important for users. Also just state changes on buttons.